All right. So I was just going to say, we should review the Kate Quinn book because I'm on like a huge Kate Quinn kick. I have like 200, 150 pages left of her other book right now, but I want to read this one. So I want no spoilers. Oh my gosh. Okay. We won't do spoilers. I am also on a Kate Quinn kick. She is, and I really like, I'm so sorry, Chris and Hannah, but like, she is my new historical fiction favorite author. She's phenomenal. Good. Such a good writer. I'm so impressed with her. I need to just really quick. Um, okay. So I'm, like, I remember what happened this is I just finished it, but I couldn't remember the second main character's name. Yeah. Okay. So the Rose Code by Kate Quinn. I'm just going to start out the gate by saying phenomenal five star A plus read. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I am going to tell everyone that need, that likes to read needs to read this book. Um, do you, have you seen The Imitation Game? Yes, obviously. Okay, phenomenal movie. I also love that. I also love movies like that that are based on true stories. So I also have the Alan Turing book that you and Courtney got me for Christmas like five years ago. What one is It's that? called The Imitation Game. Oh, I forgot that we got that for you. You should read it. Yeah. Um, he's mentioned in this book because it takes place, place in Bletchley Park, which is the like common name of the headquarters where that was all taking place where the code breakers were during world war ii in the united kingdom and so this uh story has really three characters that are the main the main characters there's osla Mab, and beth and they did not know each other before but they all got pulled into working in this um like code breaking secret type of work government work and um the story follows them. It's set in two different time periods. So like it follows them from when they first started there and when they had been working there for a couple of years throughout the war. And then it flash forwards and it has like present day after the war, like five years after the war. Um, and you find out one of them is imprisoned in a mental institution and has sent out a, a letter to the other two to be like, you owe me, you need to help, like come here and help me. Like, I shouldn't be here. Oh, my God. And so that's what you kind of find out in the first part of the book. And so you're, like, first, like, who is who is stuck in this institution? But then also, how did they wind up there and why? And it is real good. And it does ha- incorporate a lot of true, true events that happened. Um, and it dives into, like, their personal stories, too. Like, uh, who they're dating or what it's like to be a woman during this time period. A lot of women ended up working there which I find this part of the story really fascinating. A lot of women end up working there because the men were off at war, right? And how it was really hard afterwards to go back to being um, like a wife or a mom and like losing that sense of like purpose that they, in like respect that they get garnered during the war. And then they kind of like went from like 100% like breaking codes and um, helping prevent all of these like horrific um invasions and air raids and stuff to then uh like you know like cooking dinner and like no one no one knew what they had done because it was like sworn to secrecy that's so depressing that would be so hard mm-hmm. yeah so phenomenal I don't want to give too much away but so I would like, highly right five out of five you yeah. said right that's for sure so good were was there like a surprise twist at all in it or could you see the end coming no no, because so the big thing is like someone put her in the menstrual institution. Who did it? Like, how did she get framed to have to go there? And like, or is she actually crazy? Those are the kind of things you're like thinking about. I feel like in this book, so Osla, the main girl, or one of the main girls, um, she's kind of more, she's um, from a higher class family. She was a debutante sort of thing. She's dating um, the prince of Greece Philip who later married Queen Elizabeth so she is like dating him and she has this kind of more I would say like a uh, elaborate or elegant lifestyle and then Mab the second girl she came from a very like working class um, family and like her dad was out of the picture she's definitely had to like work her way up to get to where she is she's a lot harder on the outside and then Beth was like sheltered 24 year old who still lived at home and had like no confidence, no backbone. 
And so those are like the three dynamics of the girls who end up becoming friends and like how their stories evolve. That's so interesting. Which one is your favorite? Which girl? Osla. Osla. She's snarky kind of and like <laughs> witty and fun. And yeah, she um she's just a fun character. And she it dates a prince, so that's pretty cool too. You've heard like the theory that like the character you like most is the one that's most like you. I hope so. But you're like, she's snarky and fun. I was like, oh, that makes sense. All right. I, I mean, I do also relate to, or like Nesta a lot too, who <laughs> I know is snarky, not so much fun, but snarky. <laughs> yeah. You're reading The Huntress right now. Yes, it's so good. It's not World War II, is it? It is. Okay. It's like post-World War II. Okay. We another recording on that, but it's them hunting down Nazi war criminals after World War II ends. And it's more in the Eastern Europe, right? Yeah. Oh, I think it's like the Russia Soviet type of side of things. So one of there's, yeah. So they flashes back and forth and it also intertwines the character from the night, which is for, which were the Russian women who, well, I guess at the time it wasn't, it was Soviet Union women, right. Who mm -hmm. were on the front and they were bombers. They actually flew like bombing missions and they were very highly decorated. They were super intense. Oh. I uh, never knew any of that. That's They're cool. a very impressive group of people. I think they struggled with the same thing you talked about, right? Where they, they were crazy. They were bombing on the front lines during World War II. And then they're expected to like go be someone's wife and like cook dinner instead, like once they're done. So, And like not tell anyone. Like that's what was crazy. Like in here, like they couldn't even tell, like one of them got married and her husband had no idea what she did during the war. And like, didn't know that side of her at all it'd be so hard to like for them to not know your true self that would be crazy yeah how times have changed right. I mean I'm sure there's still like secret stuff that goes on but in the sense of like women being able to work and be their own person too thank goodness I would go crazy yeah. if I didn't have a job I know actually we were just talking about this because I got a lottery ticket for the Mega Millions about how <laughs> I didn't want a job <laughs> But. I love the idea of retiring. I really do and like traveling. But at the same time, like it's because I want to do other stuff. It's not because I want to like set home and make someone dinner. That's true. The house, right? Like I don't want to do that. It's a really good way to put it. Um, yeah. I want the op the option. But if I had six hundred million dollars, I don't think I'd opt <laughs> to go to work each day. If I want six hundred, I would definitely get a house cleaner for sure. For sure first thing in a, in a chef I would not be doing anything around the house no we have this hypothetical guy named chef Ryan that we talk about we're like when we win the lottery we're gonna get chef Ryan <laughs> is he just gonna cook your meals every day cook all our meals <laughs> no I thought follow this like amazing person on Instagram and she's a like younger girl like one, I don't know what's I'll call myself a girl and I'm like 35 right but um She's probably in her late twenties and she's a private chef in the Hamptons and she does like videos of herself all day. And she just like, she like gets there, has like an iced coffee. She cooks some breakfast and leaves it out. And then she preps lunch and leaves it out. And then she makes dinner. And I'm like, I need someone like that in my life to just awesome. be in my kitchen all day. Awesome. I know. And all the stuff she makes looks so good. And there's like a garden, vegetable garden at the house. Oh my gosh. So she's out there pricking vegetables and like herbs and then like cooking everything. And it looks so good. That is like my dream because on one hand, I really enjoy cooking, but after working all day, I feel like it's less enjoyable. It feels more like a task instead of like a hobby that I want to do. I agree. Like on the weekends, like doing it when there's like time and it's casual and I have a glass of wine and not when I'm like got home from work late and I'm frantic because the dogs need to walk and dinner needs cooked before mm -hmm. like seven. Like that's all sucks. Yeah, 100%. And I also like really want to eat clean and like good meals and not just like something quick and I don't know, like not good for me, but it's hard. I know. Got it. It's hard to find stuff that's low sugar too. Yeah. I watch out for that diabetes. Um. <laughs> yeah. Most pre diabetic people do have to keep that in mind, <laughs> don't they? Life is hard. It's hard to find things that are like, like a whole wheat and low sugar. The struggles are real, huh? You know, my life is hard. 
I get what you're saying though. It, it's not a fun task after work. It's not a fun thing. No, thank goodness for the Instapot. I feel like I use that probably four times a week to like cook the meat or cook the side or something. It's a good idea. I should do that. We use the crock pot like once a week probably. I mean, I feel like it's the same thing except the Instapot. You can just like, instead of having to start at like three hours early, you can start it and it'll be done in 30 minutes. Yeah, that's true. I normally start mine before work and it just stays in there for like nine hours. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. But still. Well, that's the rose code <laughs> with a side tangent. You're welcome. Way off topic. But I'm very excited about this book and I'm going to buy it. You should. Actually, I looked up the Huntress today. It's only like $5 on Amazon. I'm going to get it. It's now and it's so good. And thank you for buying it for me for Christmas. It was technically Courtney. I feel like I should give her props. Oh, really? Okay. But I, you know what's funny is like it was Courtney but I think it she asked Anne what book to get me and I think it was actually mm-hmm. Anne's recommendation has she read it I don't know I need to call her back she just called me actually and oh I did gosh. come on here you should let me know I will for sure 